Alright, so after kita dah belajar macam mana nak namakan alkene and cycloalkene according to the IUPAC nomenclature, now it's time for you to study about the physical properties of alkenes and cycloalkenes such as the physical state of them, boiling points and their solubility. Okay, you need to know the physical state of your alkenes is because sometimes uh, dalam chemical equation, uh, it is compulsory untuk you letak phase ataupun physical state of uh, your organic compound. Okay, so macam contohnya kalau let's say you tak tahu the physical state of your organic compound, alkene, uh, you can refer to this. Okay, at room temperature and atmospheric pressure, um, kalau let's say you have a straight chain, straight chain alkene, uh, kiranya tak, tak ada branch tu, kiranya tak ada substituent langsung, straight chain, uh, contohnya lah, ada 1, 2, 3, 4, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. So, this is what? This is butane. So, for example, kalau you nak build chemical equation yang melibatkan butane, and also metal sampai butane lah, kiranya carbon tu ada 1 sampai 4, and it is unbranched, uh, that means dia punya physical state dia will be in gas phase. Okay, so you bolehlah letak kat sini gas. Uh, macam tu. Uh, contohnya lah, uh, buat combustion kan. Uh, kan perlukan plus kan dengan oxygen, gas. Contohnya kalau you tak tahu, uh, you boleh refer to this. Kalau let's say, uh, daripada metal sampai beauty, dia unbranched, tak ada langsung branch, it will be in gas phase. Okay. Uh, and then next, kalau let's say uh, ada more than 4, uh, which starting from uh, 5 carbon atoms sampai 17 carbon atoms and it's still unbranched straight chain macam ni, it's going to be in liquid phase. Okay, lastly, kalau let's say ada more than 18 carbons in a straight chain alkene ataupun more, uh, it's going to be in solid phase. Alright. Okay, the next physical properties of alkenes and cycloalkenes that you need to know of is about boiling points. Okay, boiling points ni, apakah faktor yang mempengaruhi boiling points? Back in semester 1, uh, we know that the factor yang mempengaruhi boiling points ialah the type of intermolecular forces of the organic compound. Okay, so kalau you tahu the type of intermolecular forces of your organic compound tu, senang untuk you tahu dia punya boiling point tinggi ke rendah. Okay, uh, so kita tahu ada berapa jenis intermolecular forces. Ada dua, satu hydrogen bond, yang kedua ialah van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces pula ada dua jenis. Kita ada uh, dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces ni yang paling lopek lah, yang paling uh, yang paling weak, the weakest uh, type of Van der Waals forces. Okay, uh, so sekarang ni dekat alkin dengan cycloalkin. Kita tahu alkin dengan cycloalkin adalah hidrokarbon yang ada karbon dengan hidrogen atom sahaja. Okay, and it is single bond. So if you look at this organic compound, we know that the type of intermolecular forces there, it can't be hydrogen bond. So, therefore, it is van der Waals forces type of intermolecular forces, which we know van der Waals forces ni, dia punya intermolecular forces, dia lagi rendah, lagi weak, lagi lemah compared to hydrogen bond. And then, van der Waals forces pula ada dua. Uh, satu, London dispersion force, lagi satu, dipole-dipole. Uh, so, tak mungkin lah alkins ni ada dipole-dipole because kita tengok dua-dua pun tak ada electronegativity yang macam lagi tinggi ke uh, towards each other. So, that's why um, the type of van der Waals forces yang alkin dengan cycloalkin ni ada adalah London dispersion force. Okay? So, after you have known the type of intermolecular forces, uh, barulah senang sikit you nak sort and uh, arrange the boiling points of your organic compound. Okay, so let's look here. Uh, the boiling points of the unbranched alkenes, which means straight chain alkene, nah, tak ada langsung uh, subtuens. Okay, it will show a regular increase with increasing molecular weight. Okay, sebab kita pun dah belajar kan, uh, previously in semester 1, we have learned that uh, kalau kita nak belajar pasal boiling point sebab the Waals forces ni lagi-lagi uh, London dispersion force kita akan depends pada molecular weight. Okay, because 
the strength the strength of Van der Waal forces uh, it depends on three things okay such as molar mass okay such as molar mass ataupun molecular weight lah ataupun size of the molecule uh, lepas tu it depends ada tiga benda lagi satu uh, dengan dia punya uh, apa tu polarity lepas tu dia punya uh, bentuk tu adakah dia branch ataupun unbranch okey so sila rujuk balik the strength of van der waals forces uh, dekat semester 1 ada bagi tahu uh, molecular weight ni ataupun molar mass lah okey so we know that semakin tinggi molar mass okey semakin tinggi molar mass therefore dia punya size point of the molecule lagi besar so therefore kita tahu dia akan lagi uh, van der waals forces tu akan lagi stronger so that's why dia punya boiling point akan lagi tinggi okey uh, so kalau pasal boiling point ni memang dia melibatkan uh, pasal intermolecular process ni ya. Okay next what happen kalau let's say your alkene ni ada ada branch that means dia ada substituents. Uh, kalau let's say branch pula dia akan depends pada ni lah kita tengok balik strength of Van der Waals process ada tiga kan molecular size, molecular polarity sama ada dia branch ataupun unbranch. We know that kalau let's say alkene tu uh, apa tu Van der Waals process kalau let's say alkene tu ada Van der Waals process kan dia jenis branch makanya dia ada lower boiling point okay so kat sini adalah faktor uh, dia punya bentuk okay kalau unbranch compared to branch alkene okay unbranch dia like the unbranch alkenes tu dia punya boiling point tu akan lagi tinggi compared to branch alkenes okay and that's our explanation more about this you can uh, look at uh, semester 1 pasal intermolecular forces yang melibatkan strength of van der waals forces so you have to remember uh, kalau branch alkene okay branch alkene dia akan ada lower boiling point because dia punya van der waals forces dia pun uh, jadi lagi lemah jadi weaker okay Next, boiling points of alkenes and cycloalkenes akan increase smoothly with increasing number of carbon atoms. Sebab bila you tambah uh, number of carbon atoms, you akan tambah apa ya? You akan tambah dia punya molar mass. Dia punya molar mass pun akan bertambah. So bila molar mass bertambah, uh, makanya van der Waals forces tu akan lagi stronger. So that's why boiling point ni lagi tinggi. Okay, ah, sebab tu lah dia semakin banyak carbon atoms dekat uh, apa tu alkin dengan cyclo alkin sini makanya boiling point dia pun akan jadi lagi tinggi. Okay, uh, the last point here, uh, the boiling points of cyclo alkins are always higher than straight chain alkins. Okay, so you need to remember this. Kalau you jumpa cyclo alkins, contohnya lah, kalau let's say you compare between straight chain alkenes yang ada 3 carbon atoms versus dengan cyclic structure yang ada 3 carbon atoms macam ni okay CH3 CH2 CH3 ah uh, so merujuk kepada this point dia bagi tahu cycloalkenes uh, compared to straight chain alkenes yang with the same number of carbon atoms cycloalkenes ni dia punya boiling point dia like akan lagi tinggi daripada straight chain alkenes ni okay tapi kena uh, kena make sure lah dia punya comparison tu carbon atom dia tu bilangan dia tu sama faham for further explanations about uh, the boiling points of alkene and cycloalkene i would like to focus on three points okay which in this slide akan ada dua point utama uh, the next slide is going to be the the last point okay so point utama kat sini ialah nak bagi tahunya kalau let's say you have two straight chain di mana uh, number of carbon atoms dia berbeza kat sini uh, we have a greater number of carbon atoms which we have six carbon atoms okay and kat bawah tu you can see ada tiga saja carbon atoms so you boleh tengok kat sini yang straight chain alkene ada tiga carbon atoms dia punya boiling point lah lagi rendah compared to greater number of carbon atoms yang ada dekat this straight chain alkene sebab kenapa bila kita ada banyak number of carbon atoms dekat alkene tu makanya molekul tu dia lagi besar 
Okey, dia lagi besar maksudnya dia punya molar mass, dia punya molecular size besar, dia punya molar mass pun akan lagi uh, besar juga. So, therefore, dia akan menyumbang kepada uh, kekuatan Van der Waals forces of attraction. Okey, so um, the stronger the Van der Waals forces, the higher the boiling point. Okay, the next main point about the boiling point in alkene and cycloalkene ialah uh, comparison between straight chain dengan branch alkene. As you can see here, this is a straight chain alkene yang ada uh, 6 carbon atom. Okay, and this one pun 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, dia ada 6 carbon atom sebab dia branch. Ada subtituans, 2 subtituans kat sini. Uh, so, nak bagi tahu kat sini ni ya. Kalau branch alkene, dia punya boiling point dia always rendah daripada straight chain alkene. Although they have the same number of carbon atoms. Because why? Kenapa boiling points of branch alkene ni dia uh, rendah? Sebab kenapa? Sebab molecule tu will become more compact. Bila molecule tu become more compact, maksudnya the total surface area uh, of the molecule will be reduced. Okay, total surface area dia reduce. Therefore, dia akan ada smaller van der Waals forces of attraction. Since dia ada smaller van der Waals forces of attraction, that's why lah dia punya boiling point. Boiling point untuk branch alkenes ni, dia ada lower lower boiling point. Okay? Okay, the last main point on the boiling points of alkene and cycloalkene is about the boiling points of straight chain alkene versus cycloalkenes. Okay, previously, uh, you just know that Kalau cycloalkenes compared to straight chain alkenes yang ada the same number of carbon atoms, the boiling point of cycloalkenes ni akan lagi tinggi kan daripada straight chain alkene yang ada the same number of carbon atoms. Why? Okay, kenapa? Because cyclic molecules ni, they can get closer together. Because of the ring structure, akan buat diorang lagi uh, kemas. Okay? So, the closer the molecules, that means the intermolecular forces ataupun the Van der Waals forces of dia akan menyebabkan Van der Waals forces uh, of the cycloalkenes ni lagi tinggi. So, kalau let's say dia ada stronger intermolecular forces, cycloalkenes ni dia ada stronger intermolecular forces, therefore, you need more energy to, to break the bond. That's why lah, cycloalkenes ada higher boiling point compared to straight chain alkenes. Just because, why? Because cycloalkenes ni dia punya molecule tu can get closer together and also dia punya molecule tu lagi kemas and less wriggly. Okay? Kita boleh tengok dekat example 1 ni. We have three possible constitutional isomers untuk alkene C5H12 di mana uh, this is a straight chain isomer. Okay? straight chain and then uh, kita ada dua dua branch ok, dua branch alkene uh, untuk C5H12 lah ok, so if you can see here the straight chain uh, C5H12 ada higher boiling point compared to branch alkene ok, lagi dia branch lagi dia banyak branch lagi lah dia punya boiling point lagi rendah so we can conclude here the boiling point of the apa tu C5H12 ni will be decreased with branch alkene ok, to test your understanding you can compare the boiling point of these molecules as you can see here all of these molecules semuanya ada 5 carbon atoms yang membezakan dia ialah molecule A it is a cyclic structure of alkene which is, is a cycloalkene. Molecule B ialah branch alkenes. Okay. Uh, dia still ada 5 carbon atoms tapi dia ada branch. Ada berapa? Ada 4. Sangat banyak branch dia. And C ialah straight chain alkene. Okay. So based on apa yang I already explained to you about the boiling point of uh, alkenes and cycloalkenes. Uh, please uh, compare all of diorang punya boiling point. Siapa yang ada boiling point paling tinggi. Uh, lepas tu explain the difference in terms of the molar mass. Uh, 
uh, about the branching alkenes and lastly about the alkenes and cycloalkenes. But in this case, I believe, okay, uh, the way you want to arrange this, uh, to compare the boiling point of these molecules is going to be um, A ni akan, molecule A akan ada the highest boiling point. Okay, and uh, the lowest boiling point ialah B. And then followed by C, baru A. Okay, tapi bila you nak buat arrangement, uh, you boleh buat koma, tapi kena pair dengan A row. Uh, that's how you do, uh, ni lah, uh, buat comparison. Kalau nak arrange dia punya order of the uh, boiling points. So, this A row will show that it is it shows the increase in the boiling point okay increase in the boiling point uh, so you buat comma and then you uh apa tu pair kan dengan arrow yang tulis increase boiling point lepas tu bila nak explain you can explain kalau between cyclic cycloalkene dengan straight chain alkene okay you can say that cycloalkenes have higher boiling point is because what because cycloalkene, dia punya molecule tu lagi closer together. So, you boleh gunakan cycloalkenes punya point dia bila dia closer together. Uh, therefore, dia akan lagi tinggi lah dia punya when the walls forces of attraction. And then, kalau they say um, between straight chain dengan branch alkene, kita tahu branch alkene ni dia lagi compact. Okay. So, bila dia jadi compact, dia punya total surface area dia smaller. Therefore, dia punya van der Waals forces pun smaller. That's why boiling point dia pun lagi uh, rendah. Okay. Kalau based on molecular weight ataupun molar mass, the ones yang ada higher molar mass okay, will have the higher van der Waals forces of attraction. Therefore, boiling point dia akan lagi tinggi. Okay, the last physical properties of alkenes and cycloalkenes that you need to know is about solubility. So, basically, alkenes ni, dia less than daripada water, okay? Alkenes and cycloalkenes ni are almost totally insoluble in water. Sebab kenapa? Okay, it all refers to the type of intermolecular forces yang ada dekat alkene dengan cycloalkenes ni, okay? So, as we know, alkenes dengan cycloalkenes, both of them ada van der Waals forces and the type of van der Waals forces yang dia ada ialah land dispersion forces di mana dia tak boleh buat hydrogen bond dengan air langsung okay and you need to know sesebuah organic compound tu soluble in water only if dia boleh buat hydrogen bonding with water molecule okay so kalau let's say um, apa tu kalau let's say alkene dengan cycloalkene ni, dia ada van der Waals forces type of interaction. Dia tak ada hydrogen bonding. Macam mana nak buat hydrogen bonding dengan water kan? So that's why alkene dengan cycloalkene are totally, almost totally insoluble lah in water. Okay, sebab dia orang adalah non-polar molecule. Lepas tu dia tak boleh buat hydrogen bond dengan water molecules. Okay, tapi liquid alkenes and cycloalkenes are soluble in one another. Okay. Tapi diorang boleh soluble in one another. Bukan dekat water lah. Kat water memang totally insoluble. Tapi kalau between mereka saja, alkin dengan cycle alkin ni, they are totally soluble with each other. Sebabnya mereka dua-dua adalah non-polar. Uh, so, dikenali sebagai non-polar solvent. Sebab diorang boleh dissolve in each other. Okay. And good solvents for alkenes pun must be non-polar solvents, okay? Uh, such as benzene, uh, carbon tetrachloride, chloroform and other hydrocarbons yang non-polar juga, okay? Sebab, you can ingat, uh, kalau let's say nak buat, nak nak so, buat solub, dia soluble in water, dia mesti kena ada hydrogen bond juga, okay? Kalau let's say dia tak ada hydrogen bond, dia non-polar, that means dia boleh soluble in non-polar solvents sahajalah. Dia kena soluble dengan organic molecule yang non-polar juga. 